One. Singular sensation, every little step she takes. Ba -da 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 -da. One. Thrilling combination, every move that she makes. How are your nipples? Hot. Hey, welcome back to our stupid direction. It's some Corbin. I'm hungry. And you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Smell Thanks it. on Patreon, following Shrew Counts. Smell it! Gavin. I fixed my microphone again, so it'll be good for about a week, and then I'll fall off again. I give it an hour. Probably. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll see how long. I don't know why mine keeps coming out. and I don't touch it, really. I mean, I guess I do more than you because I do... Every single, yes, every, every time, that's every true. Every time I get up, every I push single it down. video, you have to put it down and put it back up. And you do about once a day, once or twice like, a day. Yours yeah. goes twenty times a day. Yeah, I love going twenty times a day. How about yeah, you? me too. Yeah. Uh, I've backed it off about half that. Ten hey, times a day. You're a little old now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, because I have time for. That just made me think of a lot of questions I want to ask you that we really shouldn't <laughs> talk about. Uh, <laughs> right now, today we're doing a movie review, and it's of a Bengalo film. Excuse me, Bengalo. Don't they say O's with everything? Wow. Bengalo. Orgasm. <laughs> it's an imbecile. How do you say orgasm in, uh, in Bengali? Say it in the mic. Say it in the mic. I want to hear it. You don't know. You don't know? There's no word that. All she can think about, you know what she's thinking about is her family watches this show. No. Mm. I've only said orgasm in English. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. Orgasm. El orgasmo. You just wow, reminded me of. That is Bengalo. <laughs> that just reminded me of the Are guy in Fleabag. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't he say, I'm about to arrive or something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm about to arrive. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't seen Fleabag, it's fantastic. Anyways, we're doing a movie review <laughs> of the uh, Bengali film. Our, I don't know what number uh, we're on for Sachit. I don't either. Sachit Rao. Um, it's Opa gotta be trilogy, eight, eight, the one ten? I didn't like very much, the big city hero, uh, yeah, stranger, We're right around the one we nine last. or ten, easy. Yeah, I'd say. But uh, now the music room, nineteen fifty eight. <sighs> yes. Uh, also known as, that's the actual. What's one. the correct Jal pronunciation? Salgar. Jal Salgar. Jal Salgar. Jal Salgar. Jal Salgar. Well, in Bengali, you pronounce it as Jarsal Garo. Oh, there it is. Josh Shargor. <laughs> wow. Shagar. Just proving my points. Uh, actually, my O's. Cause an Osh. Lots of Osh. Why do they do O's so much? Like, Why not? Oh, are the men just that good? Yep. Right. The o well, I've, we're off the rails. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> This is obviously going to be out of resource. It came out in 1958. Yeah. But it is. I don't know if it's on India, but it's on HBO, HBO Max. HBO Max here. Uh, I think they have almost all of Rise Collection. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, so it'll be 100 cents for it if you haven't watched it. Go watch you have it. to it's look it up as the music room. Yeah. It's uh, it's very short as well. I think it's only an hour and a half. Yep. Uh, and feel... Uh, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but feels three. I agree. No. I agree. <laughs> I was going to say, it doesn't even feel like 90 minutes. <laughs> Anyways, what would you... Uh, your initial thoughts. Uh, so... All I can do right now is measure it in in terms of other Satyajit Rai films. Mm -hmm. So it's it's definitely not in my top three films, but it's definitely nowhere near my bottom three. Mm -hmm. It's it's definitely in the upper middle, and there's only one reason for that. It is an ex an exceptionally good character study. There's so much more to love about the movie for me than not love about the movie. That's given the caveat that you have to enjoy high level cinema and be the kind of person that like I was thinking about this watching it you'll like his films the same way you would like a lot of um, LJP's films mm -hmm. if you're the kind of person who when you go to a different country one of the things you like to do is just like in the morning get up and just sit and listen and like stand on the balcony and look and watch mm -hmm. that's the kind of filmmaker he is so I really liked it I didn't love it and the only reason I didn't love it is because while it's a great character study 
I wasn't personally connected to the character in ways I am with other of Rise films. Well, I think that was also probably the point a little bit. Exactly. He wasn't trying for that necessarily. I mean, this character, even though he does at times get you to relate to him in terms of emotion at times. Yeah. He's a rich landlord who thinks a lot of himself and but then he which is actually impressive because normally these characters aren't ones that you can typically put as your lead of the film because right this is not a person that everybody really wants to relate to right he's a rich landlord that's kind of just full himself spending all of his money and like yep, he's he's living on his glory days and <laughs> all that kind of definitely stuff definitely classist yeah, definitely but obviously he goes on this uh, tragic journey um, and stuff happens to him obviously once again spoiler review yep um but then then that kind of helps him realize some things or come to term with some things or or at least you think he does does. it doesn't actually fully answer a lot of it yeah i don't i don't personally think he does i I was talking about that we had lunch afterwards and i was talking with her about it and i I said i've seen this before yeah a long time ago yeah in 1950 and her her dad loved this movie um it because there's there's a there's a couple things going on here there's just the symbolism of what this guy represents yeah but then there's also who this guy is as a personal story. So you've got both of those. On the personal level, you know, obviously, the things he cares about are superficial. They're casteist, they're classist, they're aristocracy, they're money, uh, his reputation, until his wife and kid are gone. Mm -hmm. Then he realizes none of that crap matters. Yeah. I don't want to live without what matters most. Mm -hmm. And then he reaches a place where you think maybe... He's going to turn over a new leaf. Almost. Yeah, but what brings him off the roof immediately gets him to a place of seeing his neighbor as he's looking at his elephant drive by in the car, and there's the symbolism of that. And then his first turn is to go, "I'm going to use, I'm going to use the last of what I've got to show him." And I really love his final. Do you know why he failed in I won? Because of my bloodline. And then the very last line of the film is, "Blood. What, what, what good is your bloodline now?" It was a really great uh, last twenty minutes, I guess. Of oh the yeah, film. from the, the, from, the lights going down. Yeah, for, from that part, but then also before the the whole um, end musical number, mm-hmm. whoever was the performer, and that was it was just wonderful to lo- watch and listen to. Apparently, she's a legend, as are the majority of the musicians. Okay, that he made it a point to use um, uses the wrong word hire uh, these artists that are renowned and to accentuate a lot of Bengali music mm. as long as uh, with other music and uh, that she is a renowned uh, dancer well, of that particular just, style. He kind of just let her go for like 15 minutes. It sure like. did. And yeah. He was just, that was, he was like, this is the, this is the movie for the next 15 minutes and or so. That's one of my favorite things about him. I said, he takes his time. I, I said this to Indrani as well. I said, I don't know that there is in cinema right now as ballsy a director other than, I mean, it's stylistic as well. So the closest stylistically and ballsy I've mentioned is LJP. Mm. He he reminds me a lot of Satyajit Rai in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, Anurag is ballsy, but he's a completely different style. Yeah, yeah. He's just as ballsy, but it's a very different style. I don't I don't know of anybody other than LJP in all world cinema who's willing to just slow burn you into the seat and really doesn't care. Maybe Bong. How. You've seen but his other stuff besides Parasite? I've seen some of his other stuff, not all of it. Mm. Just a small handful. And the thing that's different is that, like, while he can do that, there's a symmetry to his cinematography that never gets you in a place of feeling that slow burn. Rai does that. He he will give you... They're very nice shots, but they're stagnant. And they're just putting you in a place and you're going to feel this place. And the inseparability, I thought, was incredible of the palace and the man. Mm -hmm. And how they were basically, like when he goes into the music room for the first time and he looks in the mirror. Yeah. Which is probably his first time seeing his reflection in years. Mm -hmm. And how he, like the music room, has aged. Um, Yeah. What are you going to say? He knows how to direct a movie. Yeah, he does. <laughs> um, and like I said, I thought it was a really interesting choice. The The lead is um, 
uh, uh, Chabi Biswas, right? Is that Chabi? Okay. Biswas? Yes. Or Bishwash? Chobi Bishash. Oh, Pishash. Chobi Hosho. Chobi Bishash. Chobi Bishash. Chobi Bishash. I love the servant, by the way. Oh, yeah. The main good. servant guy? Yeah. He was great. Uh, but you, uh, and I love the double the double thing on the guy, just to let him know, you stink more than the others. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, I, I really enjoyed the the fact that he he takes he, he usually yeah, he always does this obviously with even with like hero his characters aren't usually these black and white characters. No. They're they're complex oftentimes. Um, and he doesn't make, he doesn't have the, he doesn't like have a typical hero no. per se, right? right? That you see a lot in at least current Indian cinema or maybe post Amitabh Bakshan, uh, Indian cinema. Um, but they're just these characters and he's like, you, I don't know if you're going to relate to him, Yeah, but this is his story. Yeah. But I love that. Just like. I love stories like Kabir Singh. This is not a telling of a good person, really. Mm -hmm. Right, just, no. This happens. People get fall in love with abusers, and then they stay with abusers. Yeah. You don't know if that abuser has changed. You hope he has. Right. But people do that. Right. No one's condoning it, but that's life. It's just what happens, and that's what I think a lot of people confuse what we think about Kabir Singh. Uh, they do. <laughs> uh, but um, And that even bad people have good traits. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the fact that, like, we see this man, I, from the beginning, you're like, hmm. Is he going to step out on his wife? Like right, that's what that's what right. he, the vibe he was given right. in the beginning, right? He's like, she was like, behave, and he was like, <laughs> right, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm going to sleep with everyone or who, whatever he was going to do. That he was just, you seemed like no, it was very clear. He enjoyed like when she before she left, she knelt down and touched his feet, and I turned to Andrani and I said, why don't you ever do that? Because <laughs> <laughs> you stand, and he clearly enjoyed that yeah and and all of the trapping like that come with the patriarchal important. power yeah 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 uh and you could tell that obviously he, he wants to be the the first one to offer give an offering which mm -hmm. was actually a really good scene it was uh, obviously there at the end of her great performance yeah uh, that she gave but the fact that he he stopped and he kind of just paused for a second he didn't say anything for a good couple of seconds and he just he likes the status and that's that's his entire thing, and I don't like. Yeah, you know, like you were saying, I don't know if he changed in the end. Yeah, at all. He might have. I think he changed from being completely sad to kind of going back to almost how he was. Yeah, that's the thing. Is there wasn't his arc doesn't take him to a revelation and a character change. Almost takes him back. It kind of takes him back to where he started. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and it's and even his grieving is. Like everything about him is really selfish. Mm -hmm. He doesn't. He's he's grieving. He doesn't care. I'm not going to come down because. But but you have all these servants and these people who depend on you. I don't care. I'm grieving. Mm -hmm. And I also love the fact that like all of his films, there is clearly. They always tell you that you know tell what you know, especially to writers. Write about what you know, mm -hmm. um, because no one else will be able to talk about what you know better than you, and that's your area of expertise. And he. He tells stories about what he knows. And I know he didn't write this, but I know there's a connectivity he felt with the story that was more than the symbolism that's there of this personal character and what he represents definitively and directly, but then also larger things like aristocracy versus lower caste. And I see a lot even of his own self-realization for himself. Like, where am I? I can almost, I can almost feel Satyajit Rai's uh, self observations mm -hmm. about himself, like where where am I in this story? Where am I clinging to old things? Where am I looking down on people? Where am I, uh, in the exact opposite way, thinking I'm doing something good? But if I really were to stop and look at it, I'm being selfish. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I just I wish we could talk to him about every movie he's ever made. <laughs> Unfortunately, you can't. Yeah. Um, and this one was actually, uh, I just looked at it, right after the first two of Pooh's. And then it was came. the music room. And then he did a, a Harry Potter film, The Philosopher's Stone. Mm, That's interesting. interesting. Did they steal that from, uh, did J.K. She, steal it from you? She did. Wow. 
Transphobic and, uh, and stealer. Yeah, so this is this is interestingly very, very early. And then he went back to Apu. Yeah. And then did the goddess. Um It doesn't feel early. Well, it's very interesting. I think he's just always had a supreme grasp on um directing. Yeah, he really does. I mean his first film was Panther Bunchali and <laughs> that's it's you know that what there was a centurion collection is that what um yeah you know uh -huh. um there's only a few indian films on it most of them are his, are his. and then also that that other one but the family and it was partitioned at the time we saw it we loved it during classic month i forget what it was called but um i think like the big cities mm -hmm. there, yeah. the Apu trilogy, understandably. There. Uh, and but it's like though, there's a ton of films from all different ages, even more current. But like I think almost all, if not all but one, are all su rise mm. in the Centurion collection. Um, but I I also loved the symbolism of the chandelier because that started and ended with that. Yeah, it started and ended with that. But it also when he starts to see the candles go out. He um, gets real upset about that. Yeah. Well, my first thought was not that they were necessarily candles. My thought was like the parable of the the the, uh, the virgins with the lamps and the oil runs out, because what it did signify is his time is running out. Yeah. So the the chandelier represented two things. On the one hand, it represented wealth, austerity. I'm above you all, but it also represented the fact that you're. All of that's temporal and limited. And if you're not a good steward of those things, you're going to turn around, see you have built your foundation on sand, and you're going to have nothing left to say of your life other than here lies the guy who died with more toys. And he really didn't die with more no, toys. He just... And I, I, to me, I feel I thought he was going to do this, but he didn't do it, which to me signals what we mentioned a second ago is that the character didn't really change yeah, i don't think he did because if he did change i was anticipating when he went to the safe when he said okay get me the dancer and he went to the safe and he took out all of his money i said and johnny were watching and i said he's just gonna blow it all on one last fling of all that he used to love and adore and he's gonna kill himself to go be with his wife and son he didn't though he did not well at least we didn't get shown that no but i think it was kind i of think open-ended in the end kind of. i think I think him riding off with the horse, which, you know, into the oh, proverbial wait, no, sunset. Sorry. I'm, he does, I'm, but, I'm sorry. I'm, but he doesn't. He, what kills, misremembering. What kills him is the very. Gravity. Is the, the very thing that it, one of his possessions kills him. The horse? Yeah. One of his possessions. I mean, he, he, he does have that final party and he does die, but it's not. It's not. The, it, it's, it reminded me quite a bit bit of the same character study of Daniel Plainview and There Will Be Blood. Mm. It's not nearly as dark, but it's kind of comparable in that the guy doesn't die any different than he was before, irrespective of his losses. Mm -hmm. That he's still, all the way to death, he's clinging on to the things that were his identity, my bloodline, what matters to me. But this is a far more... Uh, you can be way more compassionate with this guy, mm -hmm. way more understanding. With and it, this guy. I think he did a good job as well. The the actor himself uh, did. You could, it was funny at times. You could really see all the makeup they put on him. Yeah, did he, you notice that? He, I said to Andrani while we were watching. I said he he looks a lot like like if you were to blend Rudolph Valentino and Bella Lugosi's face together, and both of them had that quintessential black and white makeup on with the lipstick and the eyeshadow. He just, he hearkened back to those days of the silent era when the the leading guys had that that look. Yeah. I loved it. He did. Yeah. yeah, he did have that. And I thought he did a good job. Uh, I liked the actor's performance. Yeah, I did, did too. Especially towards the end. I thought it. everybody was good. Oh, yeah. There were, even, even the a theatrical melodrama that's from both stage and silent era, mm -hmm. it wasn't so over the top that it was disconcerting. It actually was kind of... Um, endearing the, the 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 melodrama a little bit in mm -hmm. some of the like when he gets his son put into his arms and the guy falls away from the screen and he has a moment but it was still good 
Uh, but yeah, I, I, I enjoyed this film. It's uh, like, yeah. Where does I, it fall for you? Probably in the middle. In the middle. That's I what mean, I felt. I, I think my favorite's still the Big City. I think that one was just I love the Big City. Extremely good. I absolutely love uh, the Big City. The hero is also up there for me. And as the stranger, yeah. As so well. is the stranger. Um, I mean, he all of his are really good. They it's, are. It's and Opu has a very special place. It's hard to really. Um, so does the short film, too. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's just a great short. I've film. I've liked every single the one Big of his. Big City is is can't. It's really hard to get any better than Big City. Um, and I know this one is actually. Whenever you look up Rise, uh, like people making lists of like such a Rise best films. This one actually is usually in the top three. Yeah, for, it doesn't that that doesn't surprise me for, I think for it, a lot of people. I'm pretty sure, and you said this was your dad's favorite Rye film, yeah. Yeah, my, my family. Yeah, love this life. film. Yeah, it's mm. top. Yeah, three, yeah. Exactly what you said. I can see why. Yeah, I absolutely I, can I, see why. I know there was one that you didn't like. I think you should probably rewatch it again. I think you might like it again. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've liked every single one of his films. That's the only one I didn't like. Yeah, I know, but you're dumb. So well, you didn't like Devda, so are you really comparing Shah Rukh Khan's Devdas to a Sacha Rai film? No, I'm not comparing the two in that way. I'm comparing them in the way you liked and disliked them. It's just proving my point, guys. Just a fucking idiot. <laughs> Anyways, let us know. There's one actually that uh I, I, I do hear about it's it has a lot to do with the Bengal famine. Oh. Ooh. Really? Distant Thunder. But that's not the that's not the name. Yeah. Do you familiar with this one, Anjani? Distant Thunder. Yeah, it doesn't show that well, you could read it and know. You can't read it. Blurry. Oh. Uh it has a uh, Shumita, Shum yeah, Sumitra Chatterjee, uh, Sandhya Roy, and Bobita about the famine. Yeah, I don't think I know about this. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, it's. Uh, I know a lot of people talk about that one because uh, whenever we've talked about um, like seeing films about the famine, yeah, that one gets mentioned. Um, That's very late. That's 1973. Yeah, uh, he composed, wrote it partially, so the screenplay of it. Oh, it's a. It's originally not. He, I found. He did that a lot because the, the one we just watched, the this one, Music Room, is a short story. It's a, yeah, it's a story. It's a short story. Um, but anyways, yeah. So I'm. But he changed it a little bit. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming we have quite a bit more of Rise work to get through. I think so. How many films did he do? Don't know. Five, seven. No, I I think it's more close to the neighborhood of twenty five. You think so? Yeah. If you include shorts. It says at least twenty five. <laughs> That's you're, really funny. You're you're the internet, okay? You're, <laughs> you're not supposed to it's, make at least. It specifically says at least twenty five. That's weird. You know what happened? Big Brother heard me and then just put it in there. That's the way it works now. The music room. Gupi Gani Baja, something. I don't know. My wife just slapped her face with her hand, and she's holding her palm against her face. It's a real knee slapper. Um. The Mystery of the Pink. Ah, reminds me of your mom. The Mystery of the Pink. Pearl, sorry. A story by Sacha just... And then E.T. Yes. Because they stole it from That's him. true. Does Spielberg even give credit to that inspiration coming from ever, him? I don't think he's ever well talked about it. Anyways... Let us know what you thought about this film, which will be our next such Rai and Bengalo film that we should watch. Please let us know down below. <laughs>